Welcome back to the Fell Engine Project, where I'm building a 3.5 inch gauge live steam locomotive to my own drawings. On this episode, I make the plates for the Fell system. But first, I thought I'd take the opportunity to answer a couple of questions. Firstly, what is a Fell Engine? And secondly, how does it work? Okay, so a Fell Engine is what an NZR H class locomotive was known as. This is because it used the Fell centre rail system, invented by John Fell in the mid 1800s. Today I'm going to explain how the traction system works. This is what makes a small tank engine far more complicated and interesting. Okay, let's start with the track. The Fell engine ran on a three rail track system. Two conventional rails at the standard New Zealand three and a half foot gauge and a third horizontal rail raised in between. This centre rail was used for traction and braking on the steep slope of the Rumatucker incline. Right, with that out of the way, we can get to the traction drive wheels. These were located horizontally, pressing against the centre rail. These were used to provide additional traction and were driven independently of the drive wheels using two inside cylinders located between the frames. The four traction wheels were connected with connecting rods, transferring the drive from the front to the rear. This later proved to have issues, so the connecting rods were subsequently changed for gears. But we're sticking to the original here. The left and right traction wheels were then connected with a pair of gears. The four shafts were then topped with flywheels and the front and rear once again linked with connecting rods. These were then connected to the inside cylinders. Ok so that's the basics. As the build progresses we can cover off how the traction wheels are engaged and how the centre rail braking works. But for now it's time to get on with the build. Starting over at the mill, I square the 3mm plate using a 12mm roughing end mill. Once the plate's square, I take it over to the bench, where I give it a coat of layout blue on one side, before beginning the marking out process. I use a scriber to mark the final shape of the plate. With the marking out complete, it's back to the mill. To drill the rows of holes required in this plate, I locate the holes using the digital readout. You might notice that I'm not using a spotting drill today. Instead, you'll notice me make a quick peck with the drill before I drill right through. This can help center the drill, but I've had mixed results with it. Well that was a lot of holes, but I'm finally done. Now it's time to swap over to the ER32 collet chuck and 8mm end mill to cut the central openings in the plate. These openings are for the connecting rods that run between the inside cylinders and the flywheels. Once again I'm using the digital readout to locate the cutter, but I also have layout lines as a double check. With the openings complete, it's time to head over to the bench and clean them up with hand files. I 
work around the openings with the file, cutting to the layout lines and squaring the corners. With the openings complete, the next job is to cut the plate to shape. I use a hacksaw for this, following a layout line. Once again these have cleaned up with file to finish them to size. Next job up is to make some corner mounting angles, which I make from some old square steel bar. I square the four sides before bringing to final size. Once the block is at final size, time to cut away the inside of the angle. I do this in several passes, a couple of millimetres at a time, until I get to final size. At this point I thought it would be a great idea to clean up the inside of all the angles I'd already made, thinning them down to about 3.5 millimetres thick, using a ball end mill, so it leaves a nice little radius corner. the job at hand successfully avoided for a few hours, I got back to the mounting angles that I require for the plate I just finished making. These required an opening in the side to match the connecting rod opening that I cut earlier. With that done I cleaned it up with a file and was ready to mount. At this point I assembled the new plate that I just made along with several others that made up the assembly and here we have the result. The large slots are for the 8 axle boxes which will carry the 4 traction axles which we looked at at the beginning of this episode. The axle boxes are carried by horn blocks as in a conventional setup. These are what allows the movement for the traction axles to be engaged but we'll cover that in more detail in the future as the build progresses. Thanks for watching and don't forget to like, subscribe and share if you enjoyed this video.